Electric media obsolesces the visual, the connected, the logical, the rational. Excuse this interruption, students and teachers. This is a reminder from the maintenance staff that locking bicycles against the front railing is... What the child encounters in the present school is a carefully uh, bureaucratized uh, ar arrangement of seats, uh, class schedules, and uh, subject matters all separate, separated from one another. They are subjected to a curriculum in, of classified information, which they are expected to record, memorize, regurgitate in classified patterns. He comes in to that classroom from a prolonged experience of integral uh, participation in a highly organized global situation. Marshall was primarily a teacher, a professor, if you will, and the students loved being in his classes. Everyone in this room is in costume, except me. I have on a dress. <laughs> <laughs> No, jeans, jeans are a costume, they're a tribal costume, and they are an expression of a strong corporate grievance against the establishment. <laughs> Why do you think you wear a hick costume in a, an affluent business world? Because we get a you're comfortable. You're no, you're a bunch of affluent suburban kids, and you're not hicks, but you dress like hicks. Why? He was the only person I think I'd ever known up to that time who could in one sentence talk about the Hollywood Westerns, Plato, and then Elvis Presley. And he would connect it. McClune drove a lot of his students nuts because they were going to be tested on their knowledge of Blake and Wordsworth. They're not going to be tested on their knowledge of Batman and Pepsi Cola ads. And yet this is what McClune talked about in his class. Many people describe their key encounter with McLuhan almost as a form of conversion experience. It is a mystical kind of experience where one moment you see the world one way, the next moment you see it very differently. McLuhan made it very clear that the young were among the best investigators of media environments precisely because, as he put it, they didn't suffer from a hardening of the categories. My first teaching job was at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. When I got up to face freshman classes there, I realized I was in a strange country and that I had to learn a good deal about it from the very ground up. I think at a certain point in his life he realized that he was a bit of a dweeb when it came to relating to North American young people. He's trying to teach literature to students in the States when he's a young assistant professor. And they don't understand what he's talking about. And he didn't want to fail in that way. He thought that the way to get their attention was to show them the things that they thought they knew. Advertising. show them that they didn't know it, that they ne didn't pay attention to it. And if they did pay attention to it, they realized that their brains were being massaged. And they were oblivious to this environment, even at the same time as they were sort of robotically conditioned by the environment. Advertising is a vast military operation openly and brashly intended to conquer the human spirit. The advertiser is a manipulator, yes. He uh, plays around with human beings as his private pigment. 
He smears us. Students and historians of the future will uh, pour over our advertising world with the sort of intensity with which we should long ago have directed to it. He calls it, yeah, the mechanical bride, so that something which should be natural is no longer natural. It's being created by the new language of industry. So that you're no longer in charge, you're being managed by other kinds of really rather debased speech. What kind of a world would you rather live in? I'd rather be in any period at all, as long as people are going to leave it alone for a while. Just let go of it. Just leave it now. I am I am resolutely opposed to all innovation, all change, but I am determined to understand what's happening. Because I, I don't choose just to sit and let the juggernaut roll over me. Now, uh, this, uh, many people seem to think that if you talk about something recent, you're in favor of it. Uh, the exact opposite is true in my case. Anything I talk about is almost certainly to be something I'm resolutely against. And it seems to me the best way of opposing it is to understand it, and then you know where to turn off the button. That, I think, is the cornerstone of Marshall's fascination with modern arts of communication. You had to figure out how these things were working. Remember the beginning of The Mechanical Bride when he says that about Poe's sailor? Edgar Allan Poe has a story called The Descent into the Maelstrom. The story itself, central to his thought. What McLuhan saw in the Poe story is that it was a place where you were always moving, because that's what the environment does, you're always in a process. And since you're being massaged and you don't even know how you're being massaged, you can't step back, but by being with it, you would realize its structure or its pattern.